we will base this off of the leaving water temperature, which is the 19.4. So we'll just round to 19 degrees. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my ref tools app by Dan Foss. Now YKs are 134A machines. So I'm going to go to 134. Okay. So that's what I've got right now. This is a, a Dan Foss ref tool 134A. And I'm going to plug in the water temperature into the saturation temperature spot. So we're just going to go 19 degrees. So at 19 degrees of gauge pressure, and this is at sea level, okay, so you'll have to take into account your, your elevation. I show that that would be about 17.7, so basically 18 PSI, right about 18 PSI at that leaving water temperature. So that would be a zero degree approach. Now approach is what your pressures are going to be based off of. Okay. So a YK like that on the evaporator should have now without glycol. Okay. So you're running a brine or a glycol loop. So normally we would expect to have a less than three degree small temperature difference. That's how York calls it. It's your, your approach. That is the difference between uh, leaving water temperature and evaporator saturation. You subtract those two temperatures from each other and you get your approach value, which is how well heat is exchanging on that evaporator. So once we also add in the glycol aspect, I don't know what your concentration is. Okay, so uh, you could say what your percentage is, but let's just say that adds two or three degrees to our approach value because glycol does not exchange heat as efficiently as water does. So it actually reduces the water's efficiency a little bit, but it makes these cold, cold temperatures able or easy to obtain because then we can put it into, this would be like a freeze or an ice mode that you would engage, the chiller would go into, and then we could drop these chill water temperatures down and charge our thermal banks or whatever it is we're using. So let's just go with a five degree approach. Okay. As a generic. So if at 19 degrees leaving chill water, and if I have an approach of five degrees, that means that my evaporator saturation is five degrees less than 19, which in this case would be 14 degrees. So I will then put in, in the saturation box, I'm going to put in 14 degrees and that gives me roughly 14 PSI. This is with 134A, considering a YK. Without having a correction factor for how much glycol is in the system, I would expect roughly 14 PSI would be a, a possible or realistic pressure you could run down to. Now, if things are working really well, you may still only be two or three, maybe four degrees of approach or small temperature difference, and that's perfectly fine. That is how I calculate that. So in this particular case, you can apply that to any machine. How much approach you should have will change based off of the type of evaporator you have. But knowing that a YK is either a falling film or a flooded design, both of those under normal conditions are going to be a three degree approach. Then you put in a little bit of a, a correction factor for having a brine solution which is going to add at least a couple of degrees, at least, to that approach value. And then you can deduce down. My minimum pressure I should have and be considered normal would be, in your case, I would consider 14 PSI. I need a minimum 14 PSI. And if I have less than that, then I would be concerned that there may be something wrong. Because that could indicate that I have a higher approach value and we're, something is going on to where we're not exchanging heat correctly, whether it be GPM, whether it be refrigerant charge. We could go down a list from there as to why we have a high approach. So that, that would be my expectation. And that would be how you could go about trying to calculate what that pressure should be 